Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 3rd of July. So for Microsoft, it's their new financial year. Hopefully everyone had a good long 4th of July weekend uh, if you're in the States. As always, like and subscribe is appreciated. It is a pretty short set of updates this week. I think because it is the end of the Microsoft financial year, I imagine next week will be pretty quiet as well. As always, I've got the chapters so you can jump to a particular update you're interested in. I just did one new video this week because it was a huge video. I updated my MS-900, so the Microsoft 365 Fundamental Study Cram. There were a number of new technologies, so I just completely redid it. So, hey, if you're looking at that cert, hopefully this might help out. New features, so on the compute side, I can now have multiple virtual machine backups per day, but it actually goes beyond that. There's an enhanced policy capability I'll just show quickly. And what this actually lets me do is not only can I have more than one backup in a day, I can set a certain frequency, but I can also set an interval of when I want those frequencies to happen. So if I was to go and look at my backup policies, create a new one, VM, we see this option of enhanced. Now, when I turn this on, notice I get up to 30 days in the tier, I can pick the number I want, multiple backups per day instead of once per day. But you'll see, I can have, hey, a schedule of the frequency I want the backup, four, six, eight, 12 hours, when I wanna start it, so maybe I actually wanna start it, maybe during the day, I've got a certain recovery point objective during business hours, but it's only during business hours. So hey, I want it every four hours, but only for 16 hours. How long do I wanna keep those recovery snapshots for? Between one and 37 by default, but I can modify that. So we now have that enhanced protection option available to us in preview, but that obviously gives us a lot of flexibility. On the storage side, I can now have 5,000 storage accounts per subscription. This is up from 250 storage accounts per subscription. So, hey, just now I have a lot more versatility in how maybe I organize those storage accounts for the different purposes. I don't have to use multiple subscriptions. If it was Oprah Winfrey, it would be a storage account for you, a storage account for you. Everyone gets a storage account. And in Microsoft Purview, has a data sharing in place capability now for my blob and ADLS Gen 2 data lake. So what this really means is ordinarily, if I have data in my blob or data lake, and I want someone else to be able to do something, consume that data, I have to create a feed. So the data is duplicated to them. Well, now there's a whole process and cost associated with that, and my data is now proliferating out there. So with the data sharing, it stays in place, but consumers can leverage the data. At a super, super high level, I can imagine that when I've got my storage account, now this is either a blob or I'm using ADLS Gen 2, and there are certain kind of containers in there, certain maybe blobs within there that I want to share. Now, once again, it is Microsoft Purview data sharing that is providing that capability. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create an invite. Now that invite is specifying which particular containers, which particular blobs I want to be making available to who I'm sending the invite to. The person I'm sending the invite to then accepts that invite. Now, this must be the same region as this source storage account, must be the same type of storage account, so it's blob or it's hierarchical namespace ADLS Gen 2. I have a storage account that I'm gonna map. So I specify, hey, my storage account over here, maybe this certain path, and when I accept the invite, the data that is being shared will now show up as if it's sitting under that folder. But when I access that data, which now looks like it's sitting here, it's actually using that in place. It's not replicating it, there's no duplication. It looks to me 
that, hey, look, the data's here. I'm just using it. The transaction costs will go against my storage account, but the data stays in that source in place. So again, that's a, a great feature around the Microsoft Purview data sharing. It is preview, but you can go and play with that. They've got good documentation around it. They've got a little video showing it all in action as well. So definitely go and check that out. On the database side, so Postgres Flexible Server, that's the VM-based offering with the burstable VM types. I can stop, start. I have the automatic failover capabilities. Well, now it supports 14. So it's 14.3 to be specific. There's a bunch of new features, reducing index bloat, um, boost for workloads of many connections, a whole set of updates. So now, hey, I can go and use 14 with my Flexible. They also added support for 13.7, 12.11, and 11.16. Miscellaneous Azure Backup multi-user authorization has now gone GA. If we think about our recovery services vaults, they contain our data, the points in time of our data. And maybe there's some accidental or malicious attempt to delete, disable that protection. If someone's doing a ransomware attack against me, they might want to oh, disable all the protections. So when they encrypt my data, I can't go back. So what this multi-user authorization does is it adds another layer of protection. It adds a resource guard on privileged actions that I want to perform, like changing the protection status. And to be able to do those privileged actions, I have to be a contributor on the resource guard. Well, someone else owns that resource guard resource. It can be a different subscription. It can even be in a different Azure AD tenant. So I can get complete isolation between, hey, that resource guard and the actual recovery services vault. So the owner of the resource guard has to make me a contributor on the resource guard so I can now perform the privileged operations against the recovery services vault. For time limited, I could use Azure AD privileged identity management as part of that protection as well. But it gives me that great ability to add layers of protection um, for my recovery services vaults. Also, Azure AD authentication for App Insights. Really, this is designed around using managed identities where, hey, my Azure resources just have an inherent identity in my Azure AD that only that resource can use. If it's system assigned, if it's user assigned, it's groups of resources can share a managed identity. You can use it for service principles, but it's not recommended. So the whole point now is that when I'm integrating with App Insights, I don't have to use some local uh, authentication method. I can just use the managed identity of the resource. I give that managed identity the monitoring metrics publisher role, and now it's completely seamless. I can even go into App Insights and disable local authentication directly. It's just a properties of the App Insights resource. So this is gonna really help lock down and protect my App Insights to make sure only that true telemetry is actually being fed in. And cost management updates. So we quickly jump over and look at those. So now the mobile app is gonna show me, hey, how much money I've spent. There's a new API for configuring the various cost alerts. So it's using the scheduled actions API and there's some examples there. I can enable a common alert schema across all the different types of alerts I may now get. So if I think about, if I go and look at the alert schema, previously there were different types of alerts, metrics, logs, activity log, and they have their own types of templates for emails, webhooks. Well now I can turn on this common alert schema where I'll get this common um, set of fields across all of them. So that is available to me as well. There are some new learning experiences, and again, the regular kind of feedbacks and um, cost management labs etc. So those are all the updates. As always, I hope that was useful. Again, I hope you're having a, a great long weekend if you're in the States. Um, if not, I still hope you're having a great weekend. And until next video, take care.